Intel Optane. Does this have something to do with gasoline or is it to make your computer faster? Let's find out. Welcome to Gadget Blues, this is KC, and today we're going to be demystifying Intel Optane technology. Right now it's January 2017, and at the Consumer Electronics Show, Intel has formally announced their KB Lake platform with the 200 series chipsets and the Optane technology, although they haven't shipped the Optane drives themselves yet. We'll be examining Optane technology, where it came from, where it's headed, and how it's going to help your computer be faster. Well, Optane contains a couple of hardware innovations, it is not a new concept. Intel introduced a similar caching technology way back 13 years ago. Those of us in the PC industry or that work with computers a lot tend to use the term caching to the degree that it tends to lose its meaning and become a technical term instead of the traditional term in which you create a cache of materials that you will come back to later. For example, you would cache some food in your basement in case there is a natural disaster. To extend that food analogy, your refrigerator is essentially the level one cache for your food chain. The grocery store would be the level two cache, the distributor warehouse level three cache, and then on to the farmers. So caching is a part of our daily lives, both physically and in computers. Optane technology is a refinement of caching technology that was implemented way back in the 1980s with the early personal computers. Back then, hard drives were very, very slow. They had no cache buffer on the drive itself. And so we needed to use system memory to do disk caching. And one of the early popular methods for that was Microsoft Smart Drive that came with MS-DOS. Later on, we evolved all sorts of tiers of caching within the PC itself with level one, two, and three RAM caches in the CPU, and then caches on all kinds of storage devices. Every rotating hard drive has today between 16 and 256 megabytes of DRAM cache on it to make it faster. And way back in 2005, Intel first demonstrated their Intel Turbo Memory technology, which was the first mass use of flash memory as the caching method for rotating disks. Intel Turbo Memory used a mini PCI Express card, one lane of PCI Express, I believe 1.0, back then to implement Turbo Memory. And in some cases, it was even soldered onto the motherboard of mobile systems. It was also compatible although a superset of later technologies from Microsoft in Windows Vista called ReadyBoost and ReadyDrive. These were very much 1.0 acceleration technologies. They were not particularly fast and they were not particularly reliable. So it's great that Intel has had nearly 14 years to refine these algorithms and get their software and drivers working to the degree that it should have much more of a benefit these days than when we were taking our baby steps in flash caching. In later years, there were a whole bunch of different implementations of flash memory caching for rotational drives, such as hybrid drives, where you would have flash memory on the disk itself and it would have an over the SATA bus. You would have between 16 and later on, I believe Western Digital actually shipped a drive with 128 gigs of flash on the drive itself in addition to the rotating storage. There's also conducive uh, SanDisk Express Cache, Intel Smart Response Technology, or SRT, which is not to be confused with Rapid Storage Technology, RST, which is their storage driver, Apple Fusion Drive, Intel Rapid Start. There have been a bunch of different names for this sort of thing over the years. So. Optane is not a new concept. It's an evolutionary technology rather than a revolutionary technology. I don't mean that in a negative way. In this case, evolutionary is the best strategy because I don't want to trust my personal data to a revolutionary technology. Let that simmer off 
on the side for a few years until it becomes reliable. So as I said, Optane is the same concept as we've had before with flash memory used to speed access to rotational drives. But Intel has improved this in a couple of different ways. They've improved the speed at which the flash memory attaches to the system. And they've also improved the flash memory itself to be extremely low latency. Intel has decided that latency is far more important than even sequential transfer rate for launching applications and system boot and resume. So they've optimized for latency. While they're using the form factor that is the same as an ordinary M2 NVMe solid state device, their Optane drives are using a extra special fast version of Flash that has incredibly low latency. Now, since that ultra low latency Flash is much more expensive than ordinary Flash, you won't see it in high capacities. Intel will probably come out with 32 and 64 gig devices that will be used to cache the rest of the system. That caching works the same way as other Flash-based caching technology for rotational drives. It will learn what applications you are using and pin them to the flash, the incredibly fast Optane low latency flash, so that when you launch them, they come out of the flash instead of from the hard drive. In a way, this is kind of a selective RAID 1 in which things are written to both devices and they can read independently. It just isn't a complete mirror of the device because of course the flash is much smaller than the storage device itself. The rotational drive will be say one or two terabytes and the Optane cache will be around 32 or 64 or at least to start with. So the two things they're using this for is they figure out what the critical OS boot files are and they pin that to the flash and then they look at what your most recently used apps are and they pin that to the flash as well. If you have some other large application that you don't launch every day, let's say you normally work in office but once a week you fire up Adobe Premiere to do a little bit of video editing, Adobe Premiere isn't going to be in the flash cache, it's going to be in the rotational drive and so it's going to have the launch speed of a system that has solely a rotational drive. Intel is also saying that you can potentially reduce the amount of RAM in the laptop itself through Optane technology because a lot of that RAM is being used to keep the applications in memory and to cache the hard drive through software. And if you have Optane technology running, you don't need that as much. You could even have part of the paging file on the, the really fast Optane technology. So you might be able to have four gig instead of eight and get similar performance with Optane. You can see that I've got two devices here. They're representative of the two slots that you might have in a notebook. One for a two and a half inch SATA device, a traditional rotating hard drive, and one for M2 SSD that could be the Intel Optane. So if you have a laptop equipped with these two slots, a traditional SATA slot and an M2 slot, you can create tiers of models for the device that mix and match these two slots to come up with different price points and performance points. Let me give you an example. Here are some examples of the type of price and performance tiering we could see offered by OEMs using laptops that have both a SATA slot and an M2 slot. At the base level, you could have just a rotating traditional legacy hard drive and nothing in the M2 slot. Then the upsell would be a traditional rotating hard drive plus Optane in 32 or 64 gigs. Then above that, we could have a 256 or 512 SATA SSD in the SATA slot with a 32 or 64 Optane backing it up. And then finally in the top tier, you might have an empty SATA slot to save weight and power and a full on 256 gig NVMe in the M2 slot. This gives you very, very good flexibility in putting together your build materials. One completely off topic rant about bill of materials. I'm on a lot of conference calls about bills of materials and everyone says, hey, what's the bomb? What's the bomb for that? What's the bomb cost? Are we doing the bomb for the Middle East? And sometimes I think that I am on some sort of watch list by the government because we keep talking about bombs. I wish that we could say BOM instead, but hey, that is what it is. 
So this is terrific flexibility and configuration between your SATA and your M2 devices across notebooks and compact PCs like micro PCs and so forth. But is it for desktops? I would say not really. If you're really in the budget end of things and you want to have a large rotating drive in your main system, which is not really my philosophy. I think that rotating drives on the desktop belong in network attached storage and that the endpoints should all have fully solid state storage, but there might be some combination of configurations that you would want to do that in a desktop. It's just kind of ironic that we're seeing a lot of the enthusiast motherboard vendors advertising Optane technology for Z270 High-end enthusiast motherboards are gonna be running quad-core CPUs and 256, 512, one terabyte or above uh, flash drives. It's not really a configuration that Optane is built for. Optane is built to give you a system that performs with a rotating drive as good or better as it would with an SSD if you're running a normal set of applications on a daily basis, a productivity worker or someone who normally works in office and browsers and so forth. That is a great concept. It's not really appropriate for the enthusiast end of things where people are generally running a primary SSD. And as I often recommend, if you are building a new system today, you should be running an NVMe M2 SSD and not a SATA one because there are huge advantages to NVMe over the traditional SATA bus, both in latency and in transfer rate. I will be going over that a little bit more in detail in my upcoming video on storage choices for content creators. Of course, that appropriateness or lack thereof of Optane to enthusiast systems, especially on desktop, is a prediction, in my opinion. The proof is in the pudding. As we say in the computer business, I don't pay any attention to how many megatexels that some new video card chip is going to produce. I pay attention to the frame rate in the modern games that I care about. So let's see what the benchmarks yield when Optane actually ships and if it has any benefit in the enthusiast end of things. It's theoretically possible, but for people to have a lot of different applications that they run, they're power users or gamers, you have a large Steam library, those things are not going to be pinned to a 32 or 64 gig SSD. Just look at the amount of working set that you go through on a daily basis as a content creator or a power user, a streamer, a frequent game player, it's gonna be a lot bigger than 32 or 64. So it still may have some benefits, we'll see. It all depends on how it's optimized, how their algorithms work and, and so forth. I think that they're going to be writing all of those algorithms primarily to accelerate the main selling point of Optane, which is lower end space saving desktops and all the notebooks. There is also potential for a good amount of power saving in notebooks because of Optane if you have your working set in the Optane cache and or you're resuming out of the Optane cache, there is no need to spin up the rotating drive. So it could go into spin down mode while you're working if your apps and your data are pinned in the cache. And when you resume, you won't have to wait for the physical drive to spin up before it gets going. So resume time will be much faster, not just because of the caching, but because of the lack of weight for spinning up the rotational drive. And anytime this drive is spun down, you're gonna be saving several watts and that will make your battery last longer. So that's our look at Optane. It's an evolutionary technology, not a revolutionary one, a lot of history behind it. That's a good thing in the storage world because storage needs to move a lot slower than a lot of other technologies because your data is your life and it needs to be reliable. It's not for everyone, but it should cover a really great niche in the price point in between the traditional single rotating drive and all flash storage. I hope you enjoyed this look at Intel Optane technology and its applications, and I hope I helped demystify the concept for you. Please check out my related video if you're really Intel tech head about how the KB Lake Platform Controller Hub flexible I.O. allocation works. Other than that, please like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next Gadget Blues.